Okay, so it's beer kit review time once again. Um, I've got to admit, I haven't filmed a whole heap of brewing footage, if any, for this, to be honest. Um, there might be a little intersection of edits of photos, but it's a beer kit review of another Munson's one, and it is this one. The handcrafted Old Concord Black Ale. Now, I have to say, it's a very simple kit. It is just the two cans of malt extract, a packet of yeast, and then you just need some time and a fermenter to, to ferment it out, really. Um, I've got a bottle of it here, and I also put some into keg. And I think they taste quite different in bottle versus keg, so I'm going to do a bit of side by side. So I'm going to crack the bottle first. Well, it's quite a pop. I hope it's not a bit of a gusher, but we'll see. And then uh, I'll talk a little bit about the beer. But. As there's no actual brewing footage, in terms of the kit, it really is as simple as warming the two cans of malt extract into some warm water, emptying them into a sterilised fermenter, adding the hot water that it tells you on the instructions on the side of the box, topping up with cold water, adding the yeast, fermenting out. I left mine for two weeks. Um, there's no additional hops or anything else to add. And that is pretty much it. It's it's as easy as they come. And I have to admit, and I've said it before on some of the two can kits that I've done previously, sort of a long time ago now, I've started to do a lot more just for time and convenience. Uh, they were very kind of simplistic. They often had a kit taste to them, the kit twang that people refer to. But I have to say, and it you know, people would think I'm just kind of saying it for the kit point of view. But I feel that there's something's changed in terms of the development especially with Munson's. Um, it's true of some of the other kits that are out there, don't get me wrong. Um, a lot of hops tend to hide a multitude of sins, um, but with this, there's nothing really added extra that's gonna kinda help you hide that. And I have to admit, for a very simple kit that just has the two malt extract and the yeast, it tastes pretty good. I mean, I don't know whether my taste has changed. I do still like hoppy beers, but I do like your traditional beers. I'm not sure if I was put this on a side-by-side -side blind taste testing and someone said, you know, how do you think that beer kit was made? Would I be able to tell? And I, I think I've, I'm starting to struggle a lot more than I used to. So something clearly has changed in the development of these recipes and how they're produced. Um, I would say they refer to it as a black ale. Um, in some lights, it can be a little bit more ready. Um, it's a very funny thing, actually, because the packet says, with a colour reminiscent of Autumn Conkers, this distinctive black ale has a rich multi flavour balance with a subtle dry bitterness. Now, Conkers to me are kind of like a dark brown, sort of almost like a reddish brown, aren't they? And this can be that in certain lights, but I don't know how it can be a black ale, but also the colour reminiscent of Autumn Conkers. Anyway, uh, the pack packet shows the beer like that. I guess it's not too far off, it's pretty close. I and mean, you can see a little bit of a hue where the lights shine on it. It is, it is quite true to that colour, I have to say. Um, what they say on the back. It says, with this kit we've done the hard work for you so you can make delicious world-class beers without fear of failure. Every beer style in the range is carefully formulated with its own unique and specific ingredients, expertly blended by Mundans to allow you to easily recreate authentic craft beer of outstanding quality. We have purposely kept the brewing process ultra simple so that you can enjoy the making and the drinking of the very special modern classic ales. And it is really three steps on there. They put select your beer style, follow the easy steps, and sit back and savour. I'd agree with that. Right, let's get into it. For me, it's quite malty. Um, this one's been in the fridge while. I think the, the, this particular beer is better served at kind of a room temperature. Certainly true of a lot of dark beers, for me anyway. Two... two, two um, cold and they just become a bit, I don't know, just not right, they lose some of the, the flavour that you, you get through when it's a little bit more room temperature. Um, I've drunk all the bottles of this, it's the only beer I've got at the moment that's ready to drink uh, prior to Christmas and I did promise to save some for Christmas but it's gone. I've got um, a 9 litre corny keg but that's nearly all been drunk as well just purely because it's it's been a good beer. Um, as soon as it was ready I was kind of drinking some um, even before they fully carbonated. Um, in the bottle, for me, the only thing I can describe it is, for me, at one point it was a little bit like um, a commercial beer that you can get in a supermarket. I won't say the name, but it's like 
Poacher's Choice, I believe it's called, and which is a bit of a Marmite beer in the sense that it's um, that particular beer has damsons in it, which can make the beer quite overpowering. You can't always finish the whole lot. Um, I guess it's it's got that. There is it doesn't claim to have damsons or anything like that in there, but it's got that kind of a richness to it, and I think that the damsons can be quite overpowering in that beer. But with this, it's got a little hint of that, and that's the only commercial beer I can sort of put it to. But It's got a lovely bitterness on the back end. It's not overly bitter, but it's really sessionable. I have to say, it's like for a kit beer, very Moorish. I, I don't get that twang. I do get a very almost borderline licoricey kind of note on the end, but without being kind of too much. It, it's just like a little hint of it. I'd say it is a good kind of beer for the for the time of year, autumn stroke coming in for Christmas but anyway I've got here the the one that's been on the nine litre keg so it's almost been kind of I guess cast condition because I don't really kind of add too much extra CO2 I put a little bit of sugar in there to start it off but and it's it's definitely different than being in a bottle it, it seems a lot smoother the head's more creamy it, it stays around I mean that head stays around for a long time as well but this it's got a more creamy mouthfeel And it's definitely subtler, it kind of, I don't know what it is, I guess the carbonation really drives some of the flavours up to the head on this one, but with this one it's more reminiscent of a, like a like a dark beer, like a stout or something like that, and it's just, it's a lovely beer, I have to say, it really is, it's, with the version I've got on keg, I get less of the kind of the licorice and the damsons, but more of a kind of, It's very hard to pinpoint what I what I compare it to in terms of like other beers out there, but I'd say it's probably been one of the better kind of dark beers that is just a simple two can kit. So I know a lot of them uh, can be a bit they've, they've had the funny off taste before, but this it's not. It's it's been good. Yeah, I mean. It, Could I put any fault in it? Maybe there's not enough of it. That's probably the fault. It's all gone, but... It's good. It's really good. So, I apologise there's not a whole heap of brewing footage, but I have to say the, the instructions are super easy. And I've got other... Um, if you look on my channel, there's other beer kit reviews where you'll see me doing a very similar process. You know, it is just a simple case of emptying the cans into a... A sterilized fermenter, add in the required water per the instructions, the yeast, and fermenting out. I mean, you need very little equipment to brew this beer, um, even less if you don't use bottles and you use a um, like a the little poly pin that I've got, or you know, another kind of keg dispenser, any anything like that, or or bottle. It really is kind of that easy. Yeah, I don't know what else I can say, but that's been the. Old Conquerwood Black Ale. I guess it's, I don't know if you, it is blackish, kind of really dark black, but borderline kind of reddish. I would say it's quite true to that. We can see a little bit of light passing through it from time to time. A fantastic drop. Easy to brew, easy to drink, great price, you know, get on.